Hello guys, today I will show you how to create pickable or an object that you can grab and carry with you to create pyramids or maybe to use it as the interaction keys for the platform levels. Actually, this feature is based on my interaction system that I have implemented earlier. So if you haven't seen my tutorial, please do this so you can achieve the proper result. And let's begin. So, to start with, you need to select the interactable base class and create a child which will inherit from this class. As you can see, I have the one. It's called bp underscore pickable base. And if we open it, you can actually see that that's actually the whole logic. So, you can achieve the result you saw in the preview right at the start of this video. It's very simple and it can be very expandable. It's the base class and all other objects are actually actually they should be the children inherited from this class so we can implement the logic inside them. For instance we can grab a stone and when it is grabbed we can expand some logic to maybe make it fire or actually to add some health maybe change some attributes and so on so basically this is just the another type of interactable class but with the ability to be pickable and i think we should start with the components as you can see here we have the static mesh component make sure that you have added a tag with name of interaction so when we hover mouse over our pickable item it will be outlined and you will see the proper text for that action that you need to perform to actually to interact. Next, as you can see, the collision preset is custom, it's query only, actually not query only, I'm sorry guys, it's physics and query or full collision enabled. Object type is set to interactable, it's the custom collision channel. And I have some changes. Actually, I do need to ignore everything but to block visibility, wall static, wall dynamic, and for my purposes, physical body channels. The idea behind using this pickable object is that the person your character could not interact with the object there is no collision for it you can adjust it as you want but in my case I'd like to have no collision when I go through it but when I interact with it it should actually interact with all other objects in the world what else do I have here? let me think In the class settings, make sure that parent class is actually the interactable base class and in class defaults, as you can see, right now I have the interactable type set to pickable. It's the new type of object. Let's go to our enumeration that we have created earlier. Interactable type. And as you can see, I have added another type. Right after the checkpoint, it's pickable. The reason why I did this, because our widget, this one, hot interaction, actually triggers whether we are interacting with a pickable item, we actually change the action text element with the new text, here is gram. So when we hover a mouse over our pickable item, 
the action changed to this. I also implement another function, it's update action text, because when I pick some object, I need to change the action text to another one. So when it's picked from grab, we need to change it to actually to release text. So when we interact with it one more time, we need to release it and it should drop. So just create the function, the input is string, and use this variant of node setup. The action element is this one. Also, in the update progress bar function, I do use the same logic as for the checkpoint and interactable object. I like to have the ability of pickable and the action to be on hold, so I need to press and hold the key. And when the progress bar of my interaction is full, interaction should fire. So for this, to update it properly, on the switch, I pull away from the pickable and go with the same setup as I have in indirectable uh, checkpoint. Now that's all for the widget element. Let's move on. Also, let's take a quick look at our player. To have the proper behavior, you need to add to your player character the component that is called physics handle, this one. So, it will actually keep very simple logic right out of box. You don't need to implement any custom logic to actually change the location and rotation of that object that you are picking. So just add it here. And I think that's all. Maybe you should check your collision response. My character has custom collision. Object I spawn and I have blocked everything but water. So, with this done, let's go back to pickable base class. On construction script, as you can see, I have some logic. The model scale multiplies by vector 111, so I can change the model size of an object. So, just for purpose of just to easily change the model's scale. So it's up to you to do this or not. Next, on event begin play, make sure that begin play and all other functions that I notice, they all should have the function Call to parent. To create this one, you just need to select the proper action, right mouse click, and look for add call to parent function. So this means that first we'll fire the logic inside your parent class, and right after this, only the logic that you have here in your class. So I set simulates physics to static mesh right when the event begin play fires. Next, I use main, event main body, it's the event implemented in flexible base, which actually fires right after our progress bar is full. And I have the boolean, it's called reset main body, so by default it's set to false, and if it falls, I need to actually use a custom event, which is called grab. And I line trace by object type to spawn and for start location I actually line tracing from my 
to my layer generator. As you can see here, it's the custom function implemented in function library. It's pure function. Actually, what it does, just cast to my player character. And whether it's true, it returns the reference to my player character. You can go with another, just get character player index 0 and get its location. Next, whether hit actor was my player character, I use set time by event and create event it's called carry so the logic behind this is pretty simple when I hold my key I fire one event of line trace and whether cast is true I need to change the location rotation of my object and do it pretty much by tick but I'd like to use timers it's good practice so, time is set to loop. The logic in carry is pretty much simple. I choose camera component inside my player character, then get forward location and get forward vector. This actually is the size of line trace, not line trace, but the distance at which I will hold my pickable object. And from my character player, I search for physics handle, the component we add earlier, and use set target location and rotation. And for get actor rotation, it's actually the rotation of my character. So when I start moving my control, my mouse, you will see that the rotation will inherit the rotation of my character and it's pretty much decent result, pretty much, pretty looking result. Next, go back to the flow of our grab function. I store the timer. Next, I need to grab component at location with rotation. And what it does, it actually grabs an object at a certain point using physics handle component. As for location, I choose actor bounds of my pickable object and use origin, so I will actually pick it in the center of my object. It's very good place to actually grab an object. And I use relative rotation, so even if my object is rotated downwards or it's just I really don't care about its position and its rotation so when I grab it it will always be the proper properly aligned next when I have grabbed my object I need to switch my boolean variable so the second time I will interact with the object it will actually fire not the grab event, but the release event. And, right after I have grabbed my object, I need to update the widget for. My interactable class has the widget, so I just get the reference from it and use it to call the function we have created, update action text, with the text of release. Next, what do we have here? The release event. It's actually releases component, so physics stop interacting. Next, we need to clear and validate our timer, so the logic won't proceed ticking. We need to reset our boolean and update our widget one more time, so the text should be grabbed back. That's for the situations when we are actually releasing our object and our mouse is still on our object so that's only for this purpose also you may notice that I have event stop interacting so basically when we pick an object and 
it's overlapped with some object and we can actually we can't actually proceed with the movement. We need to simulate the proper realistic behavior. For this, we need to actually release our interaction. Or even if something is going through our, we actually do this too. And for this, I use stop interacting event. The, it's, this event is actually implemented in the basic class of our interactable base. And to have the proper behavior, I use first a call to parent function, so parent logic will fire firstly, and only then I just call function we have created here, release one, this. And that's actually all for the tutorial. So by implementing this logic, you will achieve the result that you have seen. So, well, guys, I need to tell you one more thing about our pickables. We need to create the child of the pickable class. For instance, I have the grab crate I have created earlier, this one. And as you can see, there is no logic here because it's up to you to decide with what logic to go along with. I only change the static mesh here, so I will have the proper visual look in my world. To create, actually you need to create another children. Each child can have its own logic, so you can have the pretty much recent list of an object that can be pickables. So. Let me finish here. If you like my tutorial, I hope it will help you and please leave your feedback and subscribe.